All right, so we've just finished the first two types of production methods, namely job production and batch production. And in this video, we'll finish with the other two, starting with flow production. Now, flow production is all about speed and consistency. So whenever a company has to make things in large quantities, and they obviously want to make it quickly so that they can meet the demand for it, as long as they need that, then flow production is the method. Because what flow production is, is that all the production goes on in a non-stop, one, continually moving process. The inputs go in in the beginning and there is no stoppage in the middle like we've seen in batch production where the, be the bread may have to be taken out of the oven and uh, put out to cool down. That does not happen. There is no breakage. As soon as the inputs go in, the process starts and the only time you see it stop is when the final output or the product is made. So it's one continuous flow. The idea is to make large quantities of identical products. Okay, so what flow production does is, yes, it provides you speed, but it takes away the advantage that job production had, which was customization. Here, you're making one type of product, but you're making lots of it. As long as you're doing that, you are part of the flow production process. Now, this little picture will surely explain that, that this is a factory for making apple juice. And what you see here is two very important things. Firstly, there is one continuous flow, nothing stopping. The apples go in, they get washed, they're sorting, then they get crushed, and the concentration is done, and then finally bottled to look like the apple juice. So nothing stops in the middle. The only time you see the result is where you have the product. Secondly, you will see that there's a big change in the combination of labor and capital. In flow production for speed and accuracy and consistency, you need more capital, so more focus is put on the machine side of things, the automation. And there is less, in relative terms obviously, there's less human involvement. So what you see here is just a person here making sure that the sorting process is being done right and there's no mistakes and just keep an eye on making sure that the right quality check is being applied here. And then just at the end where the person's making sure that the right number of bottles or the right number of boxes of juices are prepared so that they are sent out in the right quantity. So there's less human involvement and more machines. Therefore, flow production will always tend to be more capital intensive. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of adopting this method. Firstly, the biggest advantage that comes out of moving to flow production is that now you're getting economies of scale. Now, by definition, when you go from job to batch to flow, you're increasing your level of output. And as we know that you, as you continue to increase your level of output, your average cost of production starts coming down, the concept of economies of scale. So that's a big advantage, right? Because that's one way to cut your costs, which will allow you to make more profits. So a great motivation to move towards slow production is the concept of economies of scale. Then when you have machines doing the production, the bulk of the production, machines are more accurate. They are error-free. They don't ask for bathroom breaks. So they can do things much with much more precision than humans can. There's definitely room for human error. Therefore, because of more machinery, you're able to provide a consistent quality. Remember, you're providing an identical standardized product. So people expect it to be the same every time. When you drink a Coca-Cola, you expect the same taste every time. So the quality needs to be consistent. And that's what the machinery or the automation guarantees under flow production. And then, of course, with use of automation and CAM, you will remember that computer-aided manufacturing allows you to make things in large quantities. Because like I said, computers are non-stop, 24-7, error-free. So get them on the job and start producing in humongous quantities. And finally, what you're really getting out of this is faster and higher production levels. So when you produce more, you sell more. And when you sell more, there's a more chance of you making a profit. So what's happening here is you're reducing your costs and you're increasing your sales. Both spell like profit to me. However, there are a few disadvantages as well. Firstly, you have to let go of the customization option. Because you're making a standardized identical product, they all look the same, so you're not meeting any specific customer needs. Customers will get the same experience wherever they buy the product, whoever buys the product. 
and in order to produce in such a large quantity and spend so much on being capital intensive you need to have a lot of money in your pocket so finance will be required to spend on making a big factory bringing in the machinery getting the people trained to be able to produce in large quantities and finally this is not very exciting for the workers they are just simply there making sure that the right numbers are being met or the the gauges are working fine or the right numbers are being shown on the screen so they're not really taking control of the production side so it can be a little demotivating for them to just sit there and look at a screen however that also means that your labor costs will tend to be low however that's again offset by the amount of investment you'll have to make in the capital or the machine side of things there is one more cost that you should be thinking about in your head and that is if you're producing in large quantities don't you have to store it somewhere as well and that's true your storage cost goes up when you are employing flow production you produce a large quantities you store in large quantities so that cost will also be a disadvantage and as you will learn in our next chapter how we can use the concept of just in time inventory management to minimize the spending on inventory management but that's still a cost that has to be borne by the business using flow production now this one is my personal favorite this is mass customization this is where i get to be the king of my own product anytime anywhere i want to be now what mass customization is is that it's a cross between job and flow production the best of both the worlds in one package so what job gave you was you could meet individual customer requirements what flow production gave you was mass customization when you mix the two together the result is mass customization and let me explain this through one of my favorite examples and my favorite places to eat subway eat fresh <laughs> so whenever you go to subway you walk in and you see that all the bread has already been baked and ready to go all the veggies have been cut and ready to go they're simply there in front of you to pick your favorite mix pickles every time surely they give you your choice of meat is it going to be chicken teriyaki yes please would you like cheese on it yes please would you like it toasted how would you like it cut so all these things the options that you're providing to the customers this is where the job production side of things come in the process the flow production was where the bread was prepared and how the things were pre-cut now these bread obviously they made with dough dough is made by subway they keep producing them in flow production manner delivering it to their restaurants where they continually bake it all day because they know when the customers walk in we'll give them options these are the options you pick parmesan or oregano every time yes sir you pick your favorite set of veggies your meat your stew you get it toasted with cheese and the result is a wonderful and healthy subway sandwich so flow production in the start and just at the point of sale give the customers the option to make their own product according to their own individual requirements when you do that you can reduce your cost at the flow production level and you can increase your sales by giving people the option to customize that is mass customization mixture of job and flow production which allows mass production but adapted to individual customer requirements as well so the advantage is a clear to see right because of the flow production manner at the start you're able to produce in high volume which means you can sell high volumes and get more sales additionally when you give them the option to customize at the sales point that's what's going to yield or it's going to give you more customer satisfaction better rating than more and loyal customers coming through your door and since you're getting customer feedback you're always asking them how can your product be improved you can use that data apply it to further improve the quality and in turn the reputation of the company so it's a very inclusive two way communication process where you're also taking on board what the customers give you in their feedback and since you're also producing large numbers the lower unit costs allow you to charge a lower price for your product which is why the customers would come to you the disadvantage is that you will still need some specialist equipment if you go into subway they have their own design uh, specially made ovens so you will have to spend quite a bit on getting in the capital the machinery also your workers will have to be trained because they will all have to customize the final 
look of the product. So everyone is properly trained how to cut, how to bake, how to finish. All those things need to be drilled into the workers through a lot of uh, training if they're not already skilled. So that's there, but it's a great mix of both the worlds. You get to play, you get to use the best of flow production, and you also get the customization option of job production. So that's four methods: job, batch, flow, and mass customization. I get it; they they get the come with some good, they come with some bad, but they're all equally viable options for a company. The question is, how do you decide which method is the best method for your business? Let's look at that for a minute. So if this is you, a little confused, don't worry. If you ask yourself, oh man, how do I decide which method is the best? Well, don't worry, we have some answers for you. The first thing that will help you decide which method is the best one for you is by assessing the size of the market that you're trying to target. If it's a small niche, then perhaps job production is what you need to do. If it's a large market, you need to produce in large quantities then it's surely flow production. So an assessment of the market will help you decide. Also, the amount of capital that's available to you will also either assist you or restrict you in what you can and cannot do. So if you're limited in capital, and of course, investing in huge machinery on getting a large piece of land may be difficult for you. So if you have less capital, then maybe labor intensive process is what you need to do and keep your business at a job production level. Even if you have the money, sometimes the availability of the resource is a question mark. Where can I find the right skilled labor? Where can I find the right machinery? Because a lot of times companies have to get their machines specially built for them. And if the skill doesn't exist to make that machine for you, then you're going to be in trouble. And finally, the amount of customization that you need to give in your product will also help you determine. So if it's more customization, surely either job or mass customization are viable. But if there's not so much customization, all the products are going to be standardized, identical, then maybe batch and flow production is the way to go. So the answer to these questions will help you decide which production method you should stick with or if you should move to a different production method. Because every time you move from one to the other, there are certain advantages or disadvantages, certain changes in the environment of the business that you have to face. So let's look at that before we end. So let's say you're a company that's currently employing the job production method and you choose to move from being in job production to batch production. There are a few things that are not going to, or what shall I say that they're not going to favor you and you have to prepare for them. Firstly, there's going to be an equipment cost requirement. You will have to spend to get machinery to be able to speed up the process. Secondly, with more production, you will need to maintain more stock, which means you need to have some cash on hand because your cash, your inventory is going to take up a lot of your working capital. And finally, since you're moving away from customization and going towards standardization, the level of skill that's required is diminished. Therefore, the work that is they're doing is mundane, boring, and that leads to demotivation for the workers. So few things to look at before you go from job to batch production. Similarly, if you choose to move from batch to flow production, there are a few things to look out for as well. First of all, since you're producing in larger quantities, you need more machinery, so there's a capital cost requirement. Also, the machinery cannot be trusted with unskilled labor, so you'll have to provide people training on how to run the machinery and do things in a more capital intensive manner. And finally, since you've spent so much money in making sure that you can produce in large quantities, then you also need to make sure you have accurate sales forecasts coming in, predicting that the demand for your product is going to remain consistent. Because under flow production, you are planning to produce continuously, consistently. So just a few notes before making the change from one to the other. But we all understand that different requirements that the businesses have will help them determine which production method is the right one for them.